Okay, how's for one students in this video today? We'll be looking at exponents that are zero and negative. Okay, zero and negative. Now, lesson 8.1 was about properties of exponent, and if you'll remember, that heading was properties of exponents part one. We are going to have a part two later, but that will not be today. I guess in a way you could say that we're learning some more properties today, but I don't really call these properties so much as just sentences or principles. Um, so here we go. Okay. Um, your heading for today is zero and negative exponents. Please copy that in your notes. Write down lesson 8.2 and be sure and include today's date so that your notes are organized. Okay. Here's your heading, zero and negative exponents, lesson 8.2. In today's date, I'm going to go fast, so pause the video all that you need to. All right. Let's start off by looking at what I mean when I mention zero and negative exponents, okay? You can write this down or just watch. That's totally up to you. When I say a zero exponent, I mean a number that has zero for its exponent, or it could be a variable that has zero for its exponent, okay? Pretty obvious. When I say a negative exponent, I mean if we have a number that has a negative exponent, like negative 3, or a variable that has an exponent that's negative, okay? To me, I think it's pretty self-explanatory what zero and negative means, but I just, want to make, I just want to make sure that everyone understands what I mean by zero and negative exponents, okay? So when an exponent is zero, we call that a zero exponent. When an exponent is negative, we call that a negative exponent. Pretty simple, pretty obvious. Now let's first talk about zero exponents, all right? So here we go. I want you to write this sentence in your notes. Anything to the zero power equals one. Please copy that in your notes. Anything to the zero power equals one. Copy that in your notes. Let me give you some examples that will demonstrate what I mean, okay? So here we go. Now, um, write this down, please. If I said to solve, write this down, please, 6 to the 0 power, you would say the answer is simply 1. Now, a lot of, a lot of students think anything to the 0 power is 0, and that's incorrect. That is not right, okay? Anything to the 0 power is 1. I'm going to prove that a little bit later, okay? I will show you why that's true. Now, some students see something like this, and they say that equals 1, and that's incorrect, because think about it for a second, guys, please, please take some notes on this. Are you ready? Watch carefully. This 2 has a power of what? 1. This x has a power of what? 0. Anything to the 0 power equals 1, well, 2 is not to the zero power. These two parts are multiplying. So two to the one power is what? Two times x to the zero power is what? Do you remember? We just learned it. Anything to the zero power equals one. So your final answer would be two. Be very careful with seeing a zero and thinking the entire expression equals one. Now, here was my original problem right here. Just watch this for a second, please. Here was my original problem right here. Everybody see it? Right here. Do you, do you see the difference between this and this? Now this would equal one because this entire expression right here is to the zero power. So this whole thing becomes one, but if that's confusing, then work it out. We have a product raised to a power. Think back to lesson 8.1. We have a product, these two are multiplying raised to a power. What did I teach you guys to do? Do you remember? We take the exponent, we multiply it through. So zero times one is zero. Zero times one is zero. Two to the zero power is one x to the zero power is one. They're multiplying, thus you get one. But I just want to make sure that everyone sees the difference between this problem here and this problem here. Here, the base of the zero is just x. Here, the base of the zero is this whole expression. There is a difference. Make sure you understand that. Anything to the zero power equals one. Now, I told you I would prove that to you, so let me do that real quick. You do not have to take notes on this. I'll do it very quickly and just watch. 
same thing. That equals what else? One. Now you're probably saying, Mr. Earhart, how did you go from here to here? You're going to learn that in lesson 8.3. What you're going to learn is, is when you're dividing like bases, you write the base once and you subtract the exponents. You're going to learn that in lesson 8.3. So trust me, this does equal this, but it also equals this because anything over itself equals 1. So thus 1. If 1 equals this and this equals 2 to the 0, then 1 equals 2 to the 0 power. Not a super tough in-depth proof, but nonetheless, um, it explains it. All right, let's move on now and study some negative exponents. These will be a little more difficult, so please pay close attention and watch and learn, okay? I want you to write this sentence in your notes. So, so far, you've written two sentences. I mean, so far, you've written one. Anything to the zero power equals one. Now you're going to write a second sentence. A little longer. It's a little confusing. Write it down, then we'll talk about it. The sign, that means positive or negative, the sign of an exponent changes when the base and its exponent are moved to the top or bottom of a fraction. The sign of an exponent changes when the base and its exponent are moved to the top of a fraction or the bottom of a fraction. I'm going to explain that right now. Again, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video. Please watch this carefully. All right. of the two is 
a multiplication sign. So now we're left with 6 times 3 squared over 2, which would be 3 times 3 is 9, 6 times 9 is 54 over 2, which would be 27. Got it. Now, let's take a look at another example. Please copy this in your notes. Let's say I just have simple, something simple like 2 to the negative 4th power. Please copy that down, okay? 2 to the negative 4th power. Well, the problem is, is I don't have a what? What do I not have, guys? A fraction. So if I don't have a fraction, how in the world can I move the 2 up or down to get rid of this negative sign right here? Where's what you do? You know this by now, guys. Look. Forget this problem for a second. Okay, let's go back to old learning from a long time ago. If you have 5 times 1 third, how do you make 5 a fraction? You guys know. You put it over what? 1. Right? We've learned that. You guys know that, right? So, back to this example. How do you make this a fraction? Put it over what? 1. Now, when a lot of students solve this, for some weird reason, they think they have to move the 1 up top and the 2. I don't know why students and the 2 down here. I don't know why students do that. Listen, back to the sins I've, I've given you. You move only the base and its exponent. That's it. Nothing else. So, I want to get rid of this negative sign. So, there's the exponent. There's the base. So, I move the 2 down to the bottom. The 2 doesn't change. The exponent changes. What's already in the bottom? A 1. What's left up top? Nothing. So, what do I put? A 1. So, now I have 1 over 1 times 16, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. And now my final answer is 1 16th, because 1 times 16 is 16. Are you getting this? Um, be very careful. You move the base and its exponent. Now, I can give you a really crazy problem like this. Write this down, please. I can say, write this expression with all positive exponents, all right? Two to the negative second, x to the fifth, um, y to the negative third, um, z to the negative one over x to the fourth, negative fourth, something like that, okay? I want you to write that with all positive exponents, okay? So let's circle what we're going to move. We're going to have to move that negative exponent. We're going to have to move this. We're going to have to move this. We're going to have to move this. The x to the fifth will stay where it is. So 2 to the negative 2 moves to the bottom, and the exponent becomes positive. The y to the third comes to the bottom and stays positive. z to the 1 moves to the bottom and stays positive. And if you don't want to put that 1 right there, you don't have to. It's up to you x to the fourth comes up top and becomes positive. Now you think we're done, but hold on, I see a little simplifying we can do right here. Look at that, remember? When you're multiplying like bases, you write the base once and you add the exponent. So x to the fifth times x to the fourth is x to the ninth, all over 4y cubed c. There we go, look at that. We got rid of all of our negative exponents. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, um, there was something else I wanted to say to you guys. I'm forgetting what it was. Okay, I had to pause the video and think for a second. I remember what it is now, okay? I want to be very, very, very clear about something. Do you see the difference between this problem here? And this problem here? sign here and here a multiplication sign. You can not move this 5 to the bottom and make it a positive 2. You cannot do that because you don't have a product here. Okay? You have to have either one part in the bottom like this or a multiplication problem. You cannot have a plus or a minus sign like this anywhere. It has to be a product and a product, okay? That you cannot, you cannot put a 2, bring down your x, bring down the 5, and make it a positive 2. That is completely incorrect. Now here, do I have a product? Yes. Do I have just one term down here? Yes. So here you're fine. Leave the 2 up top. Bring your 5 down and make it a positive 2. And you've got your x. That's fine. I have no, that's, that's not breaking.
making any mathematical rules, but you cannot do that when you have a positive or a negative sign, okay? Can't do it. All right. Now, let's uh, let's take what we've learned now and apply this to some really good, challenging problems to kind of put all this stuff together, okay? So, here we go. Um, let me find some good problems here for you guys. Okay. Here we go. Uh, let's start off with this right here. Let's evaluate this. Please write this down. 5 to the negative third increased to the second power. So now we're tying in what we learned in lesson 8.1 and 8.2 together. Okay, let's solve this. First of all, we have a, um, a power raised to a power. Okay? A power raised to a power. So we multiply these. So now we have 5 to the negative sixth. Got it? Okay, we still can't solve it. Let's take it further. We want to get rid of this negative exponent. Now some of you might some of you might have wanted to get rid of this negative exponent first. You can do it that way, but it's a lot messier and it's definitely a lot harder, okay? I would first simplify down to one exponent and then get rid of this exponent. Now, but you can do it that way. It's just more difficult. Um, okay, so I want to get rid of this negative exponent. The problem is I don't have a fraction, so I'm going to make it a fraction. Got it? Now I'm going to pick up this exponent in its base and move it down to the bottom, okay? So now I have 5 to the positive 6 power. There's already a 1 down here. Nothing left up top, so I'll put a 1. Alright, so my final answer is 1 times, let's see, 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 5 is 25. Let me grab my calculator. I thought I had it here somewhere, maybe not. Let's go 25 times 25 times 25, 15,625. Alright, so my final answer is 1 over 1 times 15,625. Alright, there we go. Now, real quick, real quick, if you chose to get rid of your exponent first in here, that's fine. Um, 5 to the negative third. Put it over 1. Bring your 5 down. You're left with this, which would be 1 over 125. So 5 to the negative third equals 1 over 125 squared. So now you have 1 over 125 times 1 over 125. Let's guess what that gives you. Yeah, you guessed it. 1 over 15,625. Same answer. But I would not do it that way. It's a lot messier. You've got a lot of... You get your parentheses here. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Okay, let's try another one. Um, we're not going to do many more. Just a couple more. We'll be finished here. Let's try this one here. Let's rewrite this expression with all positive exponents, okay? 1 over 9 x to the negative 3 y to the negative 1. All right, here we go. Let's circle what needs to be moved. This does not need to be moved. This doesn't, but this does. We have a negative exponent, and this does. So I've got a 1 up top. Then I bring up my x cubed and my y to the positive 1. You don't have to put that if you don't want to. All over 9. And we're finished. You also don't have to put that 1 right there if you don't want to. It's totally up to you. All right. And students, that's it. Pretty simple. All right. I would like to look for one more problem that maybe gives you... Okay, here's one. This is our last one, and we're finished. What if I said to simplify 8 to the negative 7 times 8 to the 7th? Now, before you go getting rid of this um, exponent here, I would not... Or that negative exponent, I would not do that first. I would simplify first and then go from there. Now, what if I taught you about multiplying like bases? When you're multiplying like bases, 8 and 8, write your base once and add the exponents. When you add negative 7 plus 7, you get 0. What's anything to the 0 power? 1. There you go. Your answer is 1. Now, if you want to get rid of the exponent first, the negative exponent first, no problem. Put this over 1. Okay? Or if you want to try 
guess you can put the whole thing over one. It really doesn't matter. Either way is fine because we are multiplying. Bring this down to the bottom. One times anything is just itself, so I end up with 8 to the 7th over 8 to the 7th. What is 8 to the 7th over 8 to the 7th? 1. Anything over itself is 1. Either way, you get 1. Guys, I really hope this video has been a help to you. If you have any questions at all, never hesitate to call or email.